My entitled sister tried walking down the aisle of my wedding. It was now time to get my revenge. So, ever since I could remember, my parents loved my sister more. I don't mean in subtle ways either. If my sister accused me of something, they'd believe it and punish me. If I accused her, they wouldn't believe me. Even if there was undeniable proof, they'd still give her a lesser punishment and try to find a way to scold me in tandem. My birthday cake had to be a flavor she wanted. Hers did not and my parents always denied knowing I didn't like that type of cake. They always bought her a bit more than they did for me. We went to where she wanted, even if it was an event that should be about me. My sister grew up spoiled and didn't like me, and just used me as a punching bag. But at first, she mostly ignored me, but then it got really bad when we were young teens. I'm not sure what the cause and effect are, but she found herself with no friends and her behavior got worse. Did her friends move? Did they ditch her because she was mean? I don't know, because we were never close and my parents loved to boast about her achievements, but never ever mentioned any issues. Whereas with me, they loved to bring out any flaws of mine constantly as teasing material. I only knew she had no friends because we went to the same school and I noticed her no longer walking around with people. Anyway, she had no friends. I did. I used to be decently popular. My sister realized that, and suddenly I stopped being this occasional punching bag to a hated person she needed to take down at all times. She started accusing me of more stuff. She accused my friends of more stuff. My parents stopped allowing me to hang out with anyone. The excuses ranging from, they're not good people according to your sister, to, why are you trying to leave us? Why can't you be like your sister and enjoy your family time? What saved me from complete isolation was my extended family. Most of my family lived in the same town, and I got along with my cousins despite some age difference. At one gathering, they invited me over to something, I don't remember what, and I sadly replied I'm not allowed to go anywhere. When asked why, my kid self with no filter replied that it was because I wasn't allowed to have friends since my sister didn't have any. Well, that reached the adults, who apparently tore my parents apart. Later, I was scolded for lying and grounded, as if I had anywhere to go, for a month. But after that, they allowed me some leeway, so it was worth it. And my sister changed schools. I guess the humiliation of extended family knowing her social status was bad, and she demanded to be changed. And my parents immediately obliged, even though it cost them more since the school was further away. But she made friends on the new school. However, she never went back to the previous status quo of mostly ignoring me. I guess having felt the power of how badly she could screw with me and anger that I told family she had no friends, she never let me go. My life was still bad. Her friends would come over and bully me, and my parents called it light teasing. I never called friends over because my parents were awful hosts to them, or my sister would accuse them of taking stuff and they'd believe it. I did become close to my cousins though, since my parents never dared to do any of that to family. And then I got my first boyfriend. I didn't want to bring him home at all, but my parents insisted. Well, at one point we were separated and he came to find me to tell me my sister was flirting with him, by which he meant she came over with skimpy clothing, batting her eyelashes really badly and started telling him how bad I was and how good she was. He was irked and ran off to find me. Of course, my sister told my parents a different tale, that my boyfriend had instead tried to flirt with her, but she naturally refused since how could she do that to me? Guess who my parents believed? Now, my boyfriend wasn't perfect, but I immediately believed him, for a main reason. But remember that back then I was a teen and suffering from the unfair bad treatment. I was very resentful and moody and now hated my sister as much as she hated me. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about looks. I hadn't mentioned them yet because they weren't relevant. My parents were and are overweight. And since they liked showing love via food, such as giving you more food, buying treats, etc., my sister was and is also overweight. Whereas back then, I was not overweight, and I still am. In fact, I've always been kind of skinny, because punishment often included no treats or snacks. Obviously, weight isn't what matters, personality is. But my sister, even though she was already rude and spoiled, even her flirting attempts were bad because she never learned to work for anything. 
anything, since she could demand and my parents would deliver. Added to the fact that she didn't look like some sexy model, even my self-conscious teen self didn't believe my boyfriend would try and cheat on me with her. Anyway, my parents prohibited me from dating such a horrible boy. I did try to keep going in secret, but it was hard and the relationship ended. I did get another, but again, my sister accused him of flirting with her when he refused her advances. And again, my parents believed her. I tried pointing out how this happened again, but they decided that meant I was incapable of making good choices and kept picking bad boyfriends. The relationship couldn't handle the Romeo-Juliet situation and fizzled out again. I would eventually get called the S-word in high school, as I was fine with making out with boys and such, but refused to have relationships. Thankfully, it never got back to my sister or parents. My sister did bring home one boyfriend during all this time. He was paraded with pride, and my parents spent every second telling me how good he was and why couldn't I be like my sister and find myself someone like that. Until he stopped showing up, and suddenly he was a conniving B-word that tricked my sister. Oh well. And the unequal treatment continued at this time. She had more spending money. Her curfews were much better than mine. She was free to go anywhere at any time while I couldn't. If I pointed it out, my parents would say it's because she's older. But when I reached that age, I still didn't have the same treatment she had. And when pointed out, they'd deny they ever said that or claimed it because I couldn't be trusted like she was. Using my sister's accusations against my boyfriend and friends as proof of my bad judgment. Time goes by and it's time for my sister to graduate. She was accepted into a college, not a very well regarded one, and she had no scholarship or anything. Again, because only her achievements were told to me, I don't know which colleges she even tried for, so I can't say how badly she was rejected. I do know her grades were bad in school though, because whenever she got a B, we would celebrate. I would usually get good grades, but my parents refused to celebrate, claiming since I always got those, what was there to celebrate? My parents naturally made a lot of fanfare and told her they'd pay for everything. I was relieved she'd be going away, but not that it made my life any easier. She'd always come home every other weekend and somehow stuff kept going missing from her room or some other issue she'd think of to make my life miserable. My curfews were still strict, etc. Eventually, my mom came to talk to me about my impending graduation. I'm only a year younger than my sister. She told me since they were paying for my sister's college, they had no money to pay for mine. So it would be better for me to start working immediately after graduation and waiting until my sister finished university to see if they could afford something for me. Oh, and if I decided to stay at home, I'd have to pay for all my stuff, part of the bills and rent. I pointed out I could get student loans. My mom said yes, except no. That is because they were so caring towards me and I had such bad judgment, they would decide if a college was worth my getting into debt or not. I'm not sure how did they stop me from getting loans, but I didn't ask. Scholarships weren't mentioned. They had no idea what my grades were anymore and never believed in my capabilities. Anyway, I didn't bat an eyelid. I simply said, okay. My mom clearly didn't expect that and kept pushing. Maybe she hoped I'd throw a tantrum so they'd have an excuse to never pay for my college. But I said nothing except I understood their position, thanked them for caring, and that was that. My dad later tried the same, but I also refused to be emotional. You see, after a whole lifetime of their terrible parenting, I never had any expectations towards my education. I knew they would find an excuse to not pay for mine and make my life miserable. I never believed they would eventually pay it if I worked and waited for my sister to graduate. I had been preparing for college for a long time. I could barely go out, my friendships were slim, so I had a lot of time to study. And study I did, because I saw college as my only chance to be free. Well, the time came and I worked my ass off to get a scholarship. Not to anywhere like an Ivy League or anything like a law or medical school, but it was a good enough course in a decent college with a full scholarship. Knowing my sister would hate it and try to stop me via parents, I put my achievement on social media at the same time I told them. I even forced myself to thank them in the post. Now, they couldn't forbid me from going, as they'd have to explain to family why not. Initially, they were even a little proud and boasting about it. 
And then I guess my sister got to them, and they changed gears and even asked me if I was sure I wanted to go. They let slip my sister wasn't doing well in college, and since she was smarter and had better judgment than me, I'd suffer worse. I'd obviously stuck to my guns. They weren't happy but couldn't do anything. College was my savior. I started being happy. I still contacted my parents and visited on holidays and such, but since they refused to pay for anything, I could excuse not going a lot due to money. During this time, I avoided introducing any man to them. And my sister stopped going to college. I know she didn't graduate because again, they'd have made a fanfare about it. And she moved back home, paying no bills or rent by the way, but it's different, my parents said. And she started working at the same company as my mom, obviously thanks to my mom pulling strings. This was all sold to me as a source of pride. Oh well, but I'm almost there, I promise. I met my husband around this time. You know those people that say if I was in X situation I would have done something? Well, my husband is the type that really does. I'm the person that is meek and a doormat in any situation and then can't sleep at night wishing I had done something, had thought of something witty to say, etc. I'm the person that can't help but cry when I'm angry. My husband is the guy that claps back immediately. He loves drama in that he loves to resolve it. He's the guy that if he doesn't immediately reply to a slight, you better start worrying because he won't forgive and forget. He's just stewing something worse for revenge. He's the one that wanted me to post here and wanted to post on a nuclear revenge board too, but decided what we did wasn't nuclear. People were baffled I got together with him, but just because I was incapable, thanks to my upbringing probably, of acting like him, it didn't mean I didn't like it. I love that my husband does what I can't, and he treats people well as long as they do the same to him. When we discussed marriage, we decided we didn't care much about the ceremony due to our budget, as we'd rather spend on a dream trip to Europe for our honeymoon. As for where to do it, since his family was spread out and mine was still mostly concentrated in my hometown, we decided to do it there. We weren't living too far off either, so we could take some long trips during the weekends to manage stuff. Plus, there was some work flexibility, so we could stay in my hometown for a bit too if needed. We sent out the engagement announcement and the save the date for a few months later. Well, at this point, my parents naturally demanded they meet my man. I wanted to grow a spine and refuse, but was having a hard time. The distance had made me think maybe my parents weren't so bad. Well, my husband looked like I canceled Christmas when I told him I would at least ensure they were never alone with him. See, he had been getting ready for this. He even bought a high quality recorder he could hide in his pocket to record it all. He was stoked thinking of all the ways he could refuse my sister's advances, insult her, and then spread the recording of her attempts to my family. So, off he went alone and excited to meet them, and came back later euphoric. Babe, babe, you won't believe the awful stuff they wanted. Babe, we can screw them over so bad, there's so many possibilities. I was confused and wanted to hear the recording, but he smartly told me it was better to listen to him first or else I'd misunderstand him. Well, he went there, and instead of the flirting, my parents and sister sat him down. After some grumbling about not being okay with him, my judgment, etc., they proclaimed they were willing to pay for my wedding on one condition. My sister would walk down the aisle of my wedding first in a wedding dress. All right, so they want me to chip in real quick, and I have to say I am enjoying the story so far, and I'm glad that OP is giving context and backstory as to the relationship and dynamic with her sister, because we get so many stories that are way too short where we're like, hey, we need a little bit more information on how things are going here, and she is painting a full picture. And also, I don't think anyone's in the sister's camp right now, so we're going to see what happens. Let's continue. Their excuses were that it wasn't okay for a younger sister to marry first, so it was only fair if my sister had at least the experience of it on my venue, with pictures being taken and the dress, and she'd have a cake later too, etc. My husband will now type his part. <clears throat> hey, vengeful husband here. Hell hath no fury like a pro-revenge, instant karma, nuclear revenge lurker when his beloved is scorned. That said, as much as my wife paints me as this quick-witted dude, I admit my neurons all but short-circuited when those folks legit suggested that stuff with her sister like it was some great gift. Even Troy would rather take in the horse a second time, I think. 
Alas, after my brain rebooted, I did have a whole catalog of insults about to spew out, but something in my soul whispered in my ear, like the devil saying, string these guys along. So I said I needed to think, see how my wife, back then fiance, would react, and then ran out of there before I could give away my nefarious plans. Back to me, the wife. So my husband sincerely recounted how my parents wanted even my wedding to be about my sister with a grin on his face. And he had the recording to prove it. I was shocked. The distance had softened how bad they treated me, and I thought even they wouldn't go so far. Thankfully, my husband, insisting on the angle of revenge, helped me not go to a bad headspace. We had a blast thinking up ways to screw them over for this, from ridiculously outlandish to what we thought was feasible. We then called his much more level-headed brother when we decided on a plan. It involved having two venue addresses, giving them the wrong one, etc. Well, level-headed brother scolded us for it. While he acknowledged he would never be able to convince us from retaliation, he at least showed us that it would be hard to pull off. Some of our other ideas were also at danger of us getting sued. So, we eventually settled for the most benign plan. Act like we agreed, but then hire security and don't let her in. Obviously, if that was all, it wouldn't be pro-revenge. The rest is all mostly my husband, but he wants me to do the honors, so here goes. And just important to mention, everything he did was previously discussed with me, and were our mutual ideas. He went back to my parents, said he probed, and thought I wouldn't be down with it. However, he didn't see the issue, and not wanting family to fall apart would be down to helping them do it. He pointed out I don't like conflict, so if I was surprised with it, I might not throw a tantrum in front of all the people. On the other hand, marriage is a big thing, so who knew if I'd lash out? Thus, he suggested a compromise. They'd help pay for stuff. This way, I would feel even more pressure to not say anything, as not only would it be public, well with our families there, but I would be grateful to the help that they gave me and that would mollify me. He said my parents looked surprised, but my grown sister started skipping with joy, literally so, like a kid. So, it was accepted. I'd also like to make an important note and say my husband also claimed that due to some bad judgment of boyfriends in the past, these words were all my idea and I'm so proud of using their words against them, I was distrustful and controlling and liked to check his phone and stuff like that to ensure he wasn't cheating on me. As such, it was imperative that nothing of this plan was ever put in any writing. For any discussion pertaining to my sister walking down the aisle before me, he'd go over to their house to talk. And so began the months of deception, where my parents and sister thought they were tricking me, and my husband and I were milking them. How? Well, rather than pay for the wedding, then lay low, of course my parents wanted input in everything. Some stuff that meant a lot to me, the songs and color palette for example, my husband would convince them to let it go, to keep me in line. But since we never really cared for the ceremony to begin with, everything else was game. Or so they thought. What we did was thus, we'd go, say, check the drink and menu options. We'd then accept the lowest or second lowest price option. My husband would then secretly take my sister there to also try it out, then sigh and say, it's a pity we don't want to abuse my parents' goodwill so we wouldn't get the best options. Cue my sister demanding my parents pay for the best. My parents would then tell me not to worry and they'd pay for the most expensive. Same was done with the photographer. Flowers. My husband handed my sister a bouquet of the flowers we wanted, then sadly expressed how I wanted some other tasteless flowers. Cue my parents telling me they wanted us to go with said flowers and that they would pay for it. Wedding dress. We hit a minor snag here. My parents wanted me to use a hideous dress. Okay, but not outright hideous, but it wasn't my style and wouldn't look that good on me. We had planned on saying yes, then simply not using it, but my mom sent me a message about it so there'd be proof, so I said okay. We had to go with me refusing in text and standing my ground. My husband went over there and said he'd see what he could do. My sister suggested ruining my desired dress so I'd be forced to wear the other one. He pretended to agree. During all this time, they really kept communications outside any text. We ensured that would happen by my sister trying to message my husband and then have me reply to her. 
This solidified the I'm controlling and neurotic claims my husband was making, so they believed it and never risked anything in writing. And maybe some people might not like the thought of their partner going around and talking badly about them to family, but I'm such a doormat that the thought of being painted as this controlling and dangerous woman is extremely funny to me, and I egged my husband on to do it. I guess I have a warped sense of humor. Oh, and my sister did try to flirt with him by the way, but he acted conflicted. Also, to really sell that he was with them, my husband would pretend to tell them things without my knowledge but he never told them we hired security. It was really funny. My husband and I, who had sincerely considered a courthouse wedding to focus the cost on our honeymoon, were having this extravagant, expensive wedding and barely spent a dime. We called it a back pay for emotional damages for my parents. I think my husband, and he confirmed I'm right about this, was enjoying the whole tricking them more than planning our wedding. I didn't think it was possible to witness a guy beaming at the thought of wasting his whole Saturday doing a car trip to discuss wedding details with his in-laws but here we are. Soon the day came. The plan my parents, sister, and husband had come up with was wait until everyone was seated. Since the bride always comes out late, they'd have my sister arrive at that precise time to avoid me seeing her and trying to stop it and walk down the aisle. By the time I heard what happened, it'd be too late to do anything. As for my dress, we saved some of the leftover fabric for my dress alterations, and my husband took that to my parents' place, my sister still lives with them even now, and showed them as proof that he had ruined the dress. Then he told them he had to go back to me, as I was raging and he needed to calm me down, and that he would see them at the wedding. We made sure to keep our actual security hidden at first. As the guests and my parents arrived, all they could see was a woman with a list of names to check. Only after my parents arrived and sat down did we bring out security. A guy that looked like a bodyguard. We told him to not allow my sister in, and even agreed on paying a handsome tip if he didn't reveal we told him that. Soon the time arrived. My parents got a text from my sister that she was less than five minutes away, so my dad went and told people to start. My bridesmaids had been told to follow his lead beforehand, so they obeyed without checking with me. After they all went down and took their places, my dad stood up at the entrance as if waiting for me. During this, a friend not in the wedding party texted me to get ready. This is because if my husband or bridesmaids, etc. took out a phone and started texting, people might notice. This friend was in on the plan. She is my husband's friend and is willing to help stir drama as he is and didn't care about being a bridesmaid or anything. Well, as soon as my dad took his position, the bridal song started playing, the doors open, and I come in. My dad looked aghast at me being there. He tried glancing behind me, but you can't see the venue entrance from where we were, so he couldn't see what happened to my sister. And then his phone rang. I saw the caller ID and it was her. He just left me there with a mumbled, something came up. There were gasps and confusion all around. The friend in on it loudly asked what happened, and I lied, and in a teary voice said he told me it wasn't supposed to be me there. It's not what he said, but my husband and I agreed that if he dared leave me, I should say that to make him look the worst as possible. As for the tears, I wish I could say it was just my stellar acting, but no. Despite everything, a part of me didn't think he would go as far as to abandon me there. That the sister thing wasn't true, but just an elaborate joke? I don't know. I was hurt, but I still am. So I was sincerely trying not to cry. The friend then loudly went, what did he mean by it shouldn't be you? So that as many people as possible could hear and spread it. And then went, I will go and check and ran off. We decided to do this to make her create hell with the security and stop my dad from coming back and stopping the ceremony or something. At some point, my mom also left. At this point, my husband's dad quickly ran over and took my arm. He had been forewarned that he might need to. Watching him run desperately to me helped me smile. I walked down the aisle to whispers as people discussed what happened. Some apparently left to check too. When I reached my husband though, all was well. 
He made me feel better. Joking my sad face was so real that I deserved an Oscar. And don't worry, he'd rake them over the coals for what they did. Oh, my daughter, my precious daughter. Look, anyway, your sister's got a thing going on. I know it's your wedding. I know you got the ceremony going on, but I, I gotta go, all right? So just, just keep doing what you're doing, all right? Have fun with that. I'm out. But on a more serious note, that's gotta hurt. Like, the wedding day is about you, and you should have the people that you love there. And her dad was just like, hey, I gotta go check on your sister. Sorry. And then the mom did the same thing. Right, OP is used to it, seemingly so, but that's gotta hurt. And I don't think the parents are going to change at all unless something drastic happens. And I don't think the sister's gonna change at all unless something psychologically drastic happens, like a therapy, or psychiatrist, or meds, or something. I don't know, she's she's an evil person, right? Is, does any, is anyone in these people's camp? I'm not. You can you can disagree, but I don't I don't think many people will be. Um, you may not like OP's methods though with the revenge. I know some people aren't always pro revenge and all that, but uh, let's continue. We got married without a hitch. My parents didn't come back. I did notice a lot of people leaving, then coming back during the party, but no one dared tell me what was happening. Someone did come and whisper in my husband's ear, and he went out. He came back after a while, with a thunderous expression, but whispered in my ear he needed to go hide somewhere before he broke character and started smiling. Well, what happened is, it worked. The following is the summed account from friends, family, the security guy, and my husband that I received afterwards. My sister did arrive in a wedding dress. The security refused to let her in. Per our agreement, he claimed she must be in the wrong venue because there was already a bride. And yes, we tipped him really well as promised. My dad went there and tried threatening him with police, claiming he never heard of him so he couldn't be working there. The security agreed to the police since he was hired by us and doing his job. My dad realized by then that it would be too late and tried to demand he let my sister in. At this point, the friend came over and started shouting and insulting my sister and asking what was going on, basically stalling, and my mom soon came and eventually other people as well. At this point, the wedding plan was bust. All my parents could do now is damage control, as everyone that learned about it was aghast that they would try and pull that off, and were screaming and berating them. The three naturally said it wasn't a secret and threw my husband under the bus. At this point, my husband was summoned, and when he came over, he put on his best look of confusion and denied, denied, denied. To quote him, gaslight, gatekeep, and girl boss. He denied having ever agreed to something so ridiculous. When they insisted he did, he demanded proof, and of course, they couldn't produce any. All text exchanges they could produce were about normal wedding decisions. My sister was screaming, crying, and apparently sat on the floor kicking her legs like a kid. My dad looked like he wanted to beat my husband, but security and other people held him back. Of course, they said they had no proof because my husband told them not to text. My husband laughed and said, wow, how convenient, huh? Then again repeated, why would he ever agree to something so screwed up? Then he tore them a new one about being awful parents, then said he wasn't going to let their stupid plans and lying get in the way of his wedding and went back to me. No one believed them. The venue had cameras, but they refused to show me the recording as that was only for security purposes. But some people filmed parts of it. Watching my sister and parents get ripped apart by any and everyone that came out to check the drama was delicious. After years and years of being accused of stuff and not believed, to watch them have a taste was one of the best wedding gifts. My mother was crying, my dad kept changing from purple to white, my sister was still on the floor screaming and crying. They kept insisting on that my husband was in on it. But people kept asking why my husband would agree, and why there was no proof. Why did they want my sister to do this to my wedding? And they had no good answer to any of it. Eventually, they were told to leave and had no choice but to do so. My dad apparently had to drag my sister as she refused to leave the ground. Again, people said nothing to me all night. I guess they wanted to spare me. And maybe it's because I was the bride and not just a guest for once. But it did feel like everyone was making extra effort to be nice, positive, and excited about everything. My husband says all the expensive stuff they were eating and drinking certainly helped. We had a blast. My husband maintained the forced angry face for only a short while before breaking out in smiles again. After that, we went to the hotel to catch some sleep before going to our honeymoon. 
Speaking of which, my parents did try to pay for our plane tickets, but we thought that was risky as they could try and cancel them or something, so we refused. Of course, since that whole thing, the three have tried to contact me. I've refused calls because my husband insisted on keeping a paper trail. Smart thing, because my sister did eventually message me. I won't repeat it as it was very unhinged and didn't make much sense, but the important part was that she blamed me for her humiliation and called my husband a two-faced snake that fooled him for months, he wants to print this on our wall by the way, and hoped, but was also certain it happened, that I'd get cheated on by him. She did also suggest he was cheating on me with her, actually. My husband took the phone, screenshotted the call log, screenshotted my sister's message, screenshotted some messages of my parents demanding I pick up the phone, and sent it all to my family group chat. And he sent screenshots of messages sent to him, where they called him names and threatened him, but he kept up the, you're delusional, I never agreed to anything, shtick, and even threatened to sue them for defamation and harassment. He wrote a message in said group chat begging my family for help, as I was now being harassed by them constantly. He begged family to help stop them from trying to ruin my honeymoon, now that they had failed to ruin my wedding. Then, finished neatly with a request that they don't share our location to avoid my parents sending my sister over, and then claiming he had somehow agreed to sleep with her on our honeymoon suite. My family assured him that they would take care of it. And indeed, since then, we've had silence. My husband is a little disappointed my sister didn't disobey so he could tattle again while tearing her a new one. We'll see if it'll last. All in all, while I obviously would have preferred to have a normal, loving family at my wedding, at least for once in my life, they not only failed to ruin something meaningful to me, but I got them back. Extra info. Do I know why they treat me like this? I've been asked this question a lot, so I assume you will all think the same. And I have wondered this all my life and I still don't know. I tried asking when I was young, but they denied any difference and scolded me for acting spoiled, so I quit trying. I've thought of so many possibilities, but based on my observations, I think it's this. I was unplanned. They took a while to have my sister, so she was not only wanted, but also like a miracle child after so long. However, given that our age difference is quite small, I think they didn't expect to have a kid so soon or easily, and didn't use adequate protection way too soon after my sister's birth. And maybe they didn't notice my mom was pregnant until too late, so they were saddled with an unplanned baby while still dealing with a newborn. And they're not that well off, so having the extra expense likely didn't help, so they resented me. But that's my conjecture. Regardless, I've accepted the answer won't truly mattered. What they did to me was unwarranted no matter what. Another question, did they really think that this would work? My husband and I talked about this, and we have the theory that they never wanted to do this at all. We think my sister threw a tantrum over me getting married first when she barely got dates, and they gave my husband the outlandish proposition. As in, they didn't want to pay for my wedding and didn't think we would accept, or that it would even look good for them to do it. But by suggesting it and being refused, they could look like the good guys to my sister while having an excuse to not give me a dime. But then, my husband accepted it, and they couldn't backtrack or they risk my sister turning on them. This was amazing. It was like a Better Call Saul moment with Chuck McGill. It's like, he orchestrated it. I know OP's husband's in on it. I, I just can't prove it. And they can't, because they agreed to no evidence of their secret plan transpiring, and it bit them in the ass. But you know what? They probably wouldn't have ended up in this situation if they treated their daughter like a human being and equal and loved her. But I guess that's just kind of a crazy thought. OP did nothing wrong. She was born and then her parents were like, oh... Ew, stop that. Gross. Go away. But anyway, we're done here. This has been a long one. Thank you for sticking with it. I, 26F, am pregnant after a fertility struggle and being told that I may never get pregnant. My husband, 42M, just admitted to having an affair and getting someone else pregnant. I'm not sure what to do. My husband and I got married three years ago. When I was a teenager, I was told that due to medical complications, I may never be able to have children, but after two years of trying and fertility treatments, I'm now halfway through my pregnancy with our miracle baby. Unfortunately, because of some complications, I had to cut back on my hours at work. It's very physical stuff. My husband offered to pick up more hours to compensate, so he has been working a lot more in the past two months and coming home later. I couldn't see that anything was amiss. 
things were the same as they've always been. He always brings home flowers, food, things for the baby, coffee. He's always sending me thoughtful and loving texts throughout the day. The gaps where he was unreachable were explainable. But this morning, he sat me down and gave me news that rocked me. He told me he's been having an affair for the past six weeks and that his affair partner just found out that she's pregnant. He says that if she decides to keep the baby, she's going to raise it by herself and that they mutually agreed to end the relationship already. He wants to make things right. I don't know how things can ever be right again. He just wants to move on from what he is referring to as a transgression. How do I ever forgive him? How do you deal with the unthinkable? How do I learn to live with the idea that my child sibling might be out there somewhere, someday? And most importantly, how do I learn to move on like he wants me to? Edit. I have an OB appointment for unrelated medical reasons tomorrow, at which I will make sure to request extensive testing. I have plans to meet with a lawyer on Monday. I'm talking to my sister to see if I can stay with her. My relationships with much of my family are fractious, but I have a pretty positive relationship with her. I will not be seeking other options other than having my baby due to being pretty far along and having been told in the past I would not conceive. Regardless of what my husband has done, I love my child. Edit 2. I saw my OB on Friday and will hopefully have some test results, fingers crossed for all negative and hopefully the results will come in the next few days. I will meet the lawyer tomorrow and go from there. My sister advised me to stay in the house that my husband and I co-own until I talk to a lawyer. This has been such an emotionally harrowing time for me. He's acting like everything is normal. All I want to do is sleep. I keep telling myself it'll all be over soon. Here are some relevant comments from users. User 1 says, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be okay having a baby with a man who just abandoned one. OP replied with, I keep coming back to this. It sounds like the other woman's on the fence about the pregnancy, which is ultimately 100% her choice, but the ease with which he's willing to take the stance of just forgetting the whole thing happening is hard for me. I'm more than halfway through my pregnancy, 23 weeks, so I'm in a different position. User 2 says, Was thinking the exact thing. I'm not getting that he has any fear of losing you. Why? Either he thinks you're easy to control or not that bright. Or maybe he's desperate to stay with his wife? Which is it? Why isn't he begging you to stay with him? Why does he feel like you'll just go along with forgetting that he's cheated on you? OP replied, I think he knows that my initial reaction was going to be that yes, we could fix this or that I would agree to make things right. I think that he knows that I have so much invested emotionally in this relationship. He is my first real love, my first, well, everything really, and that I'm more likely to fight for what we have than to give it up. Even I'm surprised at how conflicted I feel. Update. Where to begin? First off, the OW decided to terminate her pregnancy, which was confirmed to me by her. Talking to her was really weird and didn't answer a lot of questions that I had for her. This is a person who knows me and has met me a number of times and I just don't get it. The motivations on both sides don't make any sense to me and I don't know if they ever will. It helped me to learn that there were no romantic feelings, but it was still confusing, especially since I perceive my husband and I to have a healthy sex life as often as four to six times per week. And I don't really get what's fun or exciting about leaving the boundaries of your marriage. We are in therapy now, separately and together. Going separately is helping me to sort out a lot of my own feelings, but I think that going together is essential one way or another as well. He has been cooperative in participating in therapy. I'm hoping that we can figure at least some things out. We've had a lot of conversations about why it won't be easy for me to just forgive this and why I need answers and changes in behavior. And I do feel like I've been heard. Divorce is not completely off the table, but it's a hard situation to be in, especially in a vulnerable state like being pregnant. I've consulted with a lawyer and made my parameters clear to him, but for right now, I want to try to work things out. I know this isn't the update that a lot of people probably hoped for, but for me, I think this is the right choice. Thank you all for your words of encouragement, advice, and perspective. I definitely took a lot of things to heart and will remember them for a long time. It's very appreciated. Edit. I want to make it clear since some people seem confused. Divorce is not off the table. 
What is off the table right now is trying to make a decision that will affect my life greatly when I'm already in a extremely vulnerable physical and mental position, all without making an attempt at healing both on my own and with him. Even if we end up divorced in the end, allowing myself time means that things have a higher chance of being amiable and easy for all of us, especially our child. New update. Six months ago, my life was the best it has ever been. My husband and I had just found out that we were pregnant after IVF. Our relationship seemed happy and strong as it has ever been, just absolutely on top of the world. I found out that he had an affair in mid-October, where his affair partner had gotten pregnant as well. The affair partner terminated the pregnancy, and I was prepared to work through things with him, even if it was just to end up divorcing amicably. Then, I found out that shortly before we got married, he had another affair that I had never found out about. I was devastated beyond devastation. He said some things to me that I will never be able to forgive or forget. I went into preterm labor at 26 weeks, which they were able to stop, but after 4 weeks I'm still having a lot of complications and I may have to deliver the baby early. My husband has been nasty and uncooperative since we fought. He hasn't come to see me in the hospital even once in 4 weeks. My life was incredible before all of this, before I knew about all of this. I wish I could go back to that. So, do you guys think that the age gap has anything to do with this? Because she's 26, he's like 40, 44. Obviously, relationships can work out with a huge age gap, but I feel like I hear a lot more negatives about these type of relationships than positives. It seems like, as she mentioned, he was her first everything, and he took probably took advantage of that. Again, I don't really hear too many happily ever after stories with a 20 year age gap, but I am speaking only from my perspective, so this is why I'm asking for yours. Please feel free to comment and share. Next story, story number two. My 26F estranged sister, 23F, wants to talk to me months after almost ruining my wedding day. How should I respond? My sister, 23F, and I, 26F, have a complicated relationship. Our parents divorced when we were young, and we lived with our narcissistic mother until I left to stay with my dad at age 16. She stayed with our mom, who I am now no contact with. We went through a lot together in childhood, and we were there for each other when our mom was abusive. However, as we grew up, we bickered like normal sisters do throughout our teenage years. Except it would get intense at times, and we would yell at each other and get into some nasty fights. It goes without saying that we had trauma, and I was our mom's scapegoat, while she was the golden child. In our adult life over the past five to six years, I've shown only compassion and kindness towards her, even when I wouldn't agree with a lot of her bad decisions and lifestyle choices and has done morally questionable things for money. She's been arrested, had do you eyes, is a dancer at a club, has only fans, dates married, sugar daddies, etc. I can see that our childhood trauma had a negative impact on her, and she very clearly has mental illness, which I believe she's at least aware of. But our relationship hasn't been super close, as we are complete opposites. But in general, it's been okay. I've always invited her to my boyfriend's family events, etc., but have always walked on eggshells around her because that's how short-tempered and unstable she is. Fast forward to my wedding this April, she arrives very late, completely missing the ceremony and almost misses photos, and she seems out of it. And my first instinct is she's already drunk or something, but I let it slide. I don't even show my frustration towards her. Later in the evening during the reception, someone lets me know that my now mother-in-law and other family members saw my sister snorting coke or some other drug right next to the bar. Obviously embarrassed, I try not to let it bother me and continue on with my big day. Then an hour or so later, I found out she's had a mental breakdown in the bathroom and our other sister, half-sister, has to take her home. Later that evening, my now husband and I arrive at our cabin for the night. I see multiple texts from her consisting of very hateful, toxic things such as I've always tried to look better than her ever since we were kids, I've always put her down, and she doesn't want to be in my life anymore because it feels wrong. That upset me deeply that night, and I have never texted her back. 
Then she texted me last night for the first time since April saying, can we talk soon? Hope you're doing okay. Truthfully, I don't know if I want to talk to her. I simply don't know what to say. I don't know if I want to reconnect with her. She's very toxic, and while I know she has mental illness and have felt bad for her over the past few years, I want to protect myself too. What would you do? Here are some more relevant comments. User 1 says, Yeah, no. That does not sound like the beginning of an apology, and by no means is an acknowledgement of her actions. It sounds like she wants something from you. You need to get out of that Cartman triangle. OP replied with, Exactly. I can't tell if she wants to apologize. Why couldn't she have started her text by apologizing and admitting her wrongdoings instead of just saying she wants to talk? Who knows if she's going to take accountability once I open that door of communication. User 2 said, Not the a-hole. You do not have to ever respond, or you can just say no. You have the right to protect yourself. It just depends on if you are in a place where you can handle being in contact with a negative person impacting you. OP said, Thank you for your advice. Truthfully, I don't think I have the mental capacity for her toxicity. Based on her text alone, I can't tell if she wants to apologize or not. I've dealt with it for the first half of my life from my mother, and I'm afraid of disrupting my peace by opening that door. Deep down, even after everything, I feel obligated to respond because she's my sister, but I have to keep telling myself she's an adult now too. Why couldn't she have just started off her text with an apology? Update. This is a transcript of a text message between Sister and OP. Sister Black, OP Blue. Never mind, it's cool. You're too busy living your perfect cookie cutter life that you worked so hard to ditch your real roots. I'm not gonna beg my blood sister to talk to me. And that right there is why I didn't respond. I think it's best for both of us for the time being that we do not have a relationship. In recent years, all we seem to do is make each other unhappy unintentionally. If that changes, I'll let you know. Please respect my boundaries. I hope you are well and wish you all of the best. End of transcript. Before I could send the response, you see in the screenshot she blocked me, so my message didn't go through. I suppose if she ever unblocks me, she will see it. I have her blocked as well. I was afraid that she hasn't changed, and this will now be how she acts. So I'm relieved she has let herself out of my life. I've taken necessary measures, including years of therapy, to better myself from our abusive childhood and broke the cycle. I hope eventually she can do the same. Here are some relevant comments. User 3 said, The sister is toxic as hell and shows that she is jealous and will always take the first opportunity to attack OP. Being blood doesn't mean anything if that blood relative is a horrible person and unhealthy to have a relationship with. OP replied with, A commenter on my first post mentioned how she could possibly be envious of how my life has turned out compared to hers. However, she's had every same opportunity as me and has allowed herself to become this way. I refuse to let her drag me down with her. She's mentioned to me once that she realizes she has some mental issues and suddenly feels really strong emotions. She's self-aware, so I just hope she eventually seeks the help she desperately needs. I don't know about y'all, but maybe I'm kind of stupid, but I was thinking to myself, why not sit down and have some coffee and hear what she has to say, and at the very least, you just leave and you get to know, but everyone else was like, no, it's a trap, don't fall for it, and I'm thinking to myself, are these people right? It seems like they were, and I was wrong, I'm stupid, and also, the sister is totally jealous. The fact that she said, go live your perfect cookie cutter life, uh, projecting much? Anyway, next story. <laughs> story number three. Families do not want their kids to date for an unusual reason. So my now girlfriend and I have known each other our entire lives. Our family have been friends for a long time now, so we were always close. My girlfriend and I had feelings for each other for a while, but never acted on it until a few months ago. We secretly dated until like two weeks ago when we went to prom together. We thought everyone would think it was the coolest thing ever, but they had the opposite reaction. They told us we weren't allowed to date and that was that. The only explanation we got is that it's weird because we're basically family, which doesn't make sense because we're not related. We're just so confused about why they're acting like this. We're not going to stop because we're going away to college in a couple of months, but it's frustrating that they're ruining this for us. Anyone have an idea why they're doing this or how we can get them to change their minds? Update. There's good news and there's awful news. Good news is no incest here. We're not related. Awful news is our parents are poly and basically are in a foursome. 
We were trying to get an answer out of our parents all day yesterday, but they kept giving the same BS and excuses. We called my girlfriend's older sister to see if she knew why they didn't want us together. We knew she would be able to try to help us because she definitely wanted us to be together. She caught the four of them together one time a few years ago and was told to keep it a secret. She told her grandparents about it and it caused a big fight that eventually got resolved. We confronted our parents about it and they confirmed it. It didn't start until all four of their children are born, so we're definitely not related. We asked them what they expected us to do and they said to break up so they could continue their relationship. They thought we had more of a brother-sister relationship and were surprised that it was actually romantic. Not really proud of it, but we flipped out on them. I don't have anything against the poly lifestyle, but it's weird when people you're close to are in it. We told them it's unfair of them to have a relationship that will be hidden forever while my girlfriend and I can't even have a public one. They said we were young and would probably break up one day, so it's better to end it now to keep peace in the family. We went and left to stay at her sister's apartment. Now what? Why does this have to be so complicated? We can't just break up and pretend like nothing happened to please our parents. It's also super hypocritical of them to use the basically family excuse at first while they are doing the same freaking thing. We're so lost right now. What should we do? Quick update. Hey everyone, I thought I should give the followers a quick update on my girlfriend and I. I'll post one last update after my girlfriend and I have moved away for school. So, we both went home after school on Monday and told our parents that we would continue dating and that was final. They haven't said anything about it since, but we can tell it bothers them. Like when I told my parents I was going with my girlfriend to a grad party yesterday, they just rolled their eyes at me. Oh well, the two of us are just having fun being together. Then, we graduated from high school on Friday. The best part about it was having our parents take pictures of the two of us. Next weekend is going to be wild with my grad party on Saturday and hers on Sunday. Going to be interesting to see what more extended family thinks of our relationship because they are all friends too. Yeah, Christmas is a train wreck. Like I said, I'll post a final update on what happened in the summer and what college life is like. Thanks for the support. It's been fun sharing our story so far. Quick update too. Hey, hopefully someone remembers these posts. Can't believe how fast the summer went, but I promised one more update when I got to school. So, early in the summer, we got more extended family reactions to our relationship. Remember, this is three generations of family friendship. It's freaking crazy. And wouldn't you know it, they had a normal reaction to two people who are happily together. We got a lot of, I knew it, or it's about time. I guess we didn't really hide our feelings for each other too, well before we got together. Which makes this whole thing with our parents even more weird. Did they seriously not see this coming? Speaking of those four, they're definitely not happy about us, but I think they're starting to accept it. They did give us a gift before we moved away for school. They did give us a gift before we moved away from school. More on that in a second. It was concert tickets for our favorite band. The concert was 20 minutes from our school, so it was good timing with our move-in. We were very grateful for the gift and hoped that it was their way of showing that they have moved on. School has been good so far. Kind of surreal that my girlfriend and I have been talking about going to our school for years, and now we're actually living it. Living it as a couple too. And no, we're not living together. We're not stupid. Even though her dorm is like a five minute walk from mine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Probably the last update unless something happens. Still thankful we're not related because that would have been a life ruining discovery. Now we're just going to see where it goes and enjoy our lives. Peace. You know what this is? This is the polyamorous version of Romeo and Juliet. Except nobody died. The stakes are way lower. No blood was shed. Or maybe this is like the poly version of the Hatfields and McCoys with a twist? Huh. I'm going to have to think on that one. But happy ending seemingly. Yay. Okay. Bye bye.